All right, folks, time to get after the Jeep, the old four Grand Cherokee. We already looked at it. That's the one that we said needs the muffler and tailpipe. Because he's all rotted out. The guy wasn't sure he's going to have us do a job because he's going to take it to the local uh, muffler shop. However, we were half the cost of the local muffler shop. So we're going to take and cut this off. Hopefully, his intermediate pipe is long enough. Um, I see it's already got a muffler shop special muffler on there. So we'll chop that off and then we'll get after it. I got to leave you guys down there out of my way and hopefully give you the best viewing angle. So let's get the torch fired up and chop it off. shield hanging down. See if we can't get some of these bucket head nuts off here. Well oh, they're actually staying together. I got I got this back one off. We got that one off. Wow. Let's see if we can do three of them for this fella. At least keep this from hanging down on the new muffler. Wow would you look at that. Not too bad for a 20 year old Jeep in New York. Let me go get some big fender washers, see if they'll hold this little guy up there. Would you look at that? 
Would you look at that? So just putting a fender washer there, a dormant fender washer. We're just sticking these in here by hand. Hold them up there. We'll get them to squish down. Oh, isn't that nice? Keeps that right out of the way. Usually these pale nuts or bucket head nuts, or whatever the heck they call them, pale nuts, I think. They uh, they typically just dissolve and the little studs that hold them on dissolve too. That'll do good. We're using the Quiet Flow stainless steel series. Oh, uh, they're not really stainless. <laughs> I mean, they claim they are, but they're not. The body of it is, but all the other crap on it's not, so they rot out. You know, a couple years they'll rot out. They really toot that up, though. Oh, stainless steel. They do give it the unlimited limited lifetime warranty, uh, which they honor against corrosion, which is fantastic. Because there's a couple things guaranteed here in New York. Death, taxes, rust. Those are the two things. They're unavoidable. We're just gonna hold this here for right now. I already stuck the tailpipe up in there. I wanna see what kind of penetration we have down on this end. Let me let that back down a little. Should've marked it. Just wanna make sure we're in all the way. And we're not. There we go, that's in far enough. And I level this little guy right up. I'm gonna get a clamp. Give her a little clippy clamp. Straighten up our tailpipe, kind of get things situated here. Hold that where it needs to be. Oh man, that looks good. Let me go get a clamp and clamp that baby down. everything looks right we're gonna give that just enough squeeze to hold it that's all we need now we'll go fiddle with our tailpipe it doesn't really require a lot of fiddling now that our mufflers in there straight you want to make sure that you're that you're in deep enough you know make sure the pipes not just in there on the edge that way you can get a full full clampage on it here that there and then we make sure that the you know the hump of the tailpipe is centered up over the axle make sure when the suspension comes up it doesn't look like anything's going to hit it and then obviously the obvious making sure your pipe is level where it comes out of the back of the vehicle and this one is we need to tweak it just to the right before we tighten it down so we need to pull it that direction let me get it over Right about there looks good. It picked it up a little bit. And then before you cram them down, don't cram them down crazy anyways. Stand back. Give her one of these. Make sure it looks good. If it does, jam them down. Looks good. job on your grand check she's all done should sound great I always trim my clamps off it's my signature move and then you can see where it goes up around around town hangs out in the back looks good 
and uh, only half the price of an actual muffler shot. Anytime we do an exhaust video or anything with a torch, we always get the comment, like you've already probably read down there, that why didn't I use a Sawzall? Sawzall's safer, you're dangerous, you're an idiot, jump off a cliff. And, and you're right, yep, your Sawzall is better, use your Sawzall, nothing can go wrong there. But for those of you that are curious, when I first started cutting back by the tailpipe, I started cutting here. I didn't realize that whoever bent up this pipe, um, or maybe it's the OG pipe, uh, it's made out of an aluminumized alloy. So therefore, it doesn't oxidize and it doesn't cut well uh, with torch. It's kind of like the equivalent of cutting stainless or aluminum, where it just heats up and just kind of blobs. Yeah, you can eventually get it with a torch, but it's a slow process. So that's when I jumped back to this adapter that somebody had put on there, which is obviously, uh, you know, a, a regular mild steel and they cut much better but you see all this white powder around it here or this white residue that's when the pipe is super corroded and has lots of salt on it if you could smell it in here when you burn salt with a torch it's quite interesting it smells like burning electronics uh, it's the best way i can describe it um, anytime you're burning salt off of off of anything it has a very distinct odor and it smells hot burning rubber burning electrical and it leaves a you know white residue behind and it makes it a little difficult to cut and that's because of the rust scale more than more than the salt you kind of got to melt through all that garbage then you can psh, then you can blow it off and then off it goes so that's why i was back there a little longer than normal you start cutting around rust it starts popping and snapping and it's pretty awful the big difference between chopping this off with your saws off which is obviously the best way to go faster stronger better uh, is when you use a torch, you get it all one shot. So I cut the clamp, psh, psh, cut that off, and then I'll just nick the pipe in several spots with the torch, and then just cut around it, and then that's when the, the uh, muffler swung down and hit the ground. And when you do this, um, if you're comfortable with your torch and you know how to use it, you can cut these slots in it and you never hit the underlying pipe. And that's why this is far more superior than the Sawzall will ever be because once I cut the muffler off, I'm ready to put the new one on. I don't have to get up there with a die grinder, chisel, outside cutter bit on the air hammer. It's off and it's ready to go. So that's why a torch is better than your Sawzall. See what she sounds like, boys. See if we need a 4 0 knocking now. Uh, now this part is gonna be a little bit trickier because there's not much to show probably shouldn't even record this portion of it plus she ain't, she ain't gonna look mint this thing's already pretty cobbled up uh, fact of the matter is so we need to get this brake line out of there yeah, talk about a crappy job uh, let's get this brake line out of here and then we'll uh, do what we got to do. Let me just get a pair of side cutters. <whistles> Not that one. You don't want to chop off the wrong one, fella. This one right here. Do -do -do -do. Is this the right one? Hope so. Ooh, it is now, baby. So, yeah, this is the one some ding dong put in there. They've got it rubbing all over that steering shaft, as you've seen back in part one. Look at that. This guy even grabbed the right size the first time. Zip it zap that nut out of there. There's that. She's an inverted flare. So we're going to just stick that there so we don't get a bunch of junk in it. And then we're going to go underneath this little guy and get this line out of there. And so we're not trying to yank through that curve of this line. Some old poly coated line, some old school stuff there. That was the next best thing before the NICOP came out was this green poly coated. So there's that. Let's uh we're gonna leave this line up here. We'll go underneath that and get that rest of that yank out of there. I'm just gonna chop it off where it goes into the front brake hose. There it is. 
pull their mess out of here. There's that, you can see. If we move your light, you'll be able to see. That's where they had it rubbing on the steering shaft, right? There, it's split wide open. So, it would have been just fine as long as he didn't steer. Okay. Do, do. I don't know where the line ran originally. So we're just gonna have to use our noodle here. Let's see. I can see the bits where they've been cut off under here. There's probably this one right here is gonna be my assumption. I think we're gonna do them a favor. We're gonna yank them old lines out that they just cut off and left there. Makes it a bit of a mess. So I'm gonna get them out. And then we're just pretty much gonna run our line from point A to point B and make sure it's not rubbing on anything or touching anything. You know, like the steering shaft, <laughs> that old stuff. Chop this piece off here. And if we get lucky, we'll get it in some of the factory brackets. We'll get some of these old lines out so they're definitely not rubbing on anything. The NICOP's a lot easier to work with, but uh, I think we'll get it flared. We'll shove it down through from the top and then kind of bend it up around. We do have this wiring harness right here, but I was gonna say we do have these fuel lines which are rigid. These are stainless, they're rigid. We could always just zip tie to those. Um, like I say, it's not gonna be the OG, it's not gonna be the factory, but it's better than what he had. I went ahead and yanked all those other pieces of line out. And lucky for us, we've got some 3 16 NICOP right here. It's a nickel copper alloy. It's quite flexible, easy to use. Here's the fitting that went into the brake hose in the bottom. We're reusing it. You dirty dog. It looked like it was in good shape and I see no reason to get a new one. So we're gonna put a classic inverted flare, or sometimes referred to as the double flare. Yes, I already know that the Eastwood tool is faster, better, stronger, and does a better flare. And I'm also aware that the Master Cool hydraulic flaring set is better, stronger, faster, nicer, all that. I own both of those. Yet I elect to go old school because this is easier, faster, and does just as good a job, in my opinion, when we're making one line. But rest assured, I do have the other options. So here's what it looks like when you do the first flare on it. it kind of bubbles her up a little bit. And then now we're going to invert it. We're all done. And it makes just as nice a flare as the other tools we mentioned, yet we don't have to drag out those other tools, which take way longer to set up. And there it is. There's your perfect inverted flare slash double flare, whatever you wanna call it. That's it. I'm gonna leave it hooked to the roll. We're going to go through and just straighten ourselves out some. And ultimately, we need to end up here at the ABS valve. We need to end up underneath. Uh-oh, we knocked that vacuum line off. Good thing we saw that, dude. Oh, it's because the vacuum line's all split and crappy. Let's take this one off. Then we don't have to worry about going underneath any of them. The perch. And then you kind of want to visualize where is it going to run in the end. Stay on that side of the lines. Down around the steering shaft, and we're down at the bottom. We're gonna leave our loop right here, and we're gonna go down underneath, we're gonna hook it up, and then we're gonna start manipulating it as we come up through, and then we'll guesstimate how much we need. We'll chop it off up here, and then make our bubble flare, and be done with it, move on with life. We're gonna need a little bend on the end. So we're gonna grab a hold of this little fella. We're gonna need 
wee bit of a bend in that direction there. We're gonna give this a couple bends of how we think we need it. These are some brake line bending pliers. They're for, these ones are for 3 16 line and that's exactly what we're using. We just kinda of want to manipulate this around how we see fit. Number one objective is to make it not rub, right? So we're just gonna kind of tweak this around till we get it fitting here in our brake hose how we want. And then once we go up there, we can start to manipulate it with our fingers. I know you guys can't really see much because everything's in the way. It's gonna be more, uh, we'll just show you the finished product type deal. Got it started in that hose. Got it kind of bent out of our way. Let me go get a uh, 3 8 wrench and snug that up. Gonna do some tweaking around here. That's gonna go there. We wanna make sure once this stuff's hooked up, it's not gonna rub. That's gonna go back down there. This is for the EVAP. We're gonna cut our hose a little long here, just get this stuff out of the way. Got her pretty darn close to where we want. Our bend is going to end up right about there. If you use your thumbs, you can make nice smooth bends. And then I'm going to guess. Whereabouts we need to cut it and then we'll just flare it and then we'll invert our bend or we'll rotate it not really invert it about 90 degrees that could be long enough It'd still look good it should be I was able to kind of manipulate it up under that steering shaft and get it back into the factory holder there, a factory holder, whether it was for this line or for the rear line, I don't know. But we've got it snapped in that groove. And we're a long ways from the steering shaft. We've got it running right up with our other line. So let's take this fitting out. We'll knock the line out of it. And we'll uh, get it flared on this line. So I just grind down where we cut the line off. Never use the side of your grinder wheel. I'll tell you that. Stick it in your vise. Take your little punch. Punch out the piece. Make sure that it is an invert bubble flare, and it is. And come back over here. Step two in making a line before you make that perfect flare. I'm talking the one you put on Instagram. Make sure you put the nut on, otherwise you look like a fool. We're gonna use our Imperial bubble flare tool. I am fully aware that the Eastwood tool is better and the Master Cool tool is even better than that. And I have both of them, so before you put the comment. However, I like using this one. It's half the size as both and works just as good. Make sure we've got that where it needs to be. Crank her down. Make sure you have the correct size bubble flare die installed. Oh, you gotta get her lined up with a hole, fella. It's your first day, dude. Come on. Come on, people are looking. You're looking like an idiot. Crank her down until she hits bottom. You'll know when you're there. It gets real tight. Ooh. Make a little noise. I'm 
pull out all the way. Get your tool back. Undo your doodads. Oh, look at that. That's pretty. You did a pretty nice job, fella. Got a nice bubble on there. Hopefully it cooperates. We'll bend our bend. <laughs> we'll bend our bend. We'll tweak it around until we get lined up here with the ABS pump. We'll get our nut started. I'm going to cram that down with a 11 mil or 12 mil, whatever size it is. Then we'll retweak and we'll be good to go. Probably can't see it, but that's it's this line here that we put in. We just kind of ran it the best we could, made sure it's not rubbing on stuff. It goes down there along the top of the frame. I snapped it into one of the factory uh, brackets there. So it clicked in there and then down along the frame and ran it right with the fuel lines. So it's kind of bent as factory as we could. You know, the downside is if he goes to the car show and he's got this side jacked up and he's got the mirror under there, uh, they might take off a couple points for that. But it's the price you pay, I guess. But if you guys are doing brake lines, get this. Uh, SUR&R makes it. Uh, they make a lot of AC lines. A lot of companies are making the uh, NICOP line. Uh, don't use copper, though. Uh, you know, you can use this NICOP alloy. These are my favorite kits. Uh, made right here in America. These are made by a company called Imperial. You probably can't read it on that one. You can read it on this one. Made in USA. Not much stuff made there. This one probably has a Mac Tools label on it, and it does. Imperial Eastman. Fantastic flare kits. One's inverted flare. This one's your classic metric line uh, bubble flare. So that's it. Quick tools. Here's what this thing looks like. No idea who makes it. I've got them in 3 16 and quarter inch. And they're okay. They're they're good, but they're not great. Uh, you have to be pretty cautious with them. You can usually do a better job with your fingers, but uh, they're nice for tight little bends. We will top it off with some dot juice. Yeah, shoot, our hose doesn't fit that bleeder very good. Yeah, we'll try our best. Okay, go ahead and push down, Josh. There it goes. There's there. Let up. Down. Up. Down. Ah, right in my face. Up. Ah, damn it. Down. All right, how's that feel, Josh? Uh, pretty good. Yep. good. Alright, let me just hit it one more time here. Down. Yeah, it looks pretty steady coming out of there. No air coming with it. Alright, just sit tight there. Let me check my uh, fittings here. Make sure everything's good. Go ahead and push down on it, Josh. Yep. There we are. We blasted her off with some brake clean. You probably can't even really see it up through there, but like I say, we just ran it up with the, up with the gas lines there and up over the frame, so turned out pretty good. Should work out good. Shouldn't rub on anything, anyways. This is gonna be a real pisser to show, and we're real close to this microphone. My face. But we've got to get these little retainers off here. We got to work our little pick down behind them. We'll give it a little screw here. Just spread the little tabs open on this. You'll see. It's kind of like the same retainers that hold the brake rotor on. Come on, little fella. Get your pick in there. You can open them up. There she goes. Watch where it goes. Okay, it goes on the floor. Then we need to get this little heat shield off here.
That's what retains these uh, O2 wires up here. It's kind of like it was an afterthought, and this is the best they could come up with. Let's see if we can't. Try to do it where we can all see, but it's not always possible. You gotta take the bad with the good. Get the front of it. There we go. She's on the ground. We're good. We got her. So that's all it is. It's just this little piece of stiff insulation. That's what holds our wires up there. Alright. Get the lighting where we can all see, kind of. You guys see there? We're going to unplug the rear O2. That's our bank two. We have I think still has a factory clips on it. That's amazing. We're gonna get our pick back up in there. Get the clip undone. We're gonna need to save that because we need to reuse it. And there, now our wire's hanging down. We can go under there and actually crack that O2 loose and then run the wires back up. Uh, let's verify we've got the right one first. Should've done that already. Which one feels heavier? This one does. If you're gonna use aftermarket sensors on a Chrysler, use NTK. Not a sponsor, but that's who makes the OEM. And don't use the counterfeit NTKs that you get from eBay Motors or Amazon. Use the NTK that you buy at your local brick and mortar store. And there we are. Big long wire. Let me make sure this looks right and make sure it has the right connector on it. All right, let's see if we can get a socket on this little fella. Yeah, I might not have enough swing with this. You see the problem there? Try a shorter ratchet, see if we got enough power with that. Oops. It's not a fine tooth ratchet. Got one more click out of it. Mother of pearl. All right, that's all we needed. She's loosey-goosey now. I don't know if it's loose enough to give it a handy. And it is. Let me get a stubby 7 8 Where are we at? There we are. I've had best luck in my career doing oxygen sensors when they're stone cold. R rarely do I heat one once in a while but i find if you heat them boy usually usually it doesn't end well threads come with them i try to do them stone cold even if i just start it up to bring it inside and it's technically cold just that little bit of heat doesn't usually help usually makes it worse so i wait for them to cool right down let's grab the new one that's been my my experience anyways Thread this through here. Stick this in here. I probably already mentioned about the NTK sensors. Chryslers are, are usually pretty fussy. Oftentimes, if it's still available OEM, I will get OEM for Chryslers. Well, most everything I'll get OEM for when it comes to O2 sensors, but I've had pretty good success with NTK in Chrysler products when the OEM's not available anymore. There we go, it's all snugged up. Happy days. 
Now we've got to get the wire back up where it was and then get that piece of insulation back up there to hold those wires up against the oil pan and keep them from burning up on the exhaust. Need to flatten these little guys back out. All right. And this here is that little piece that goes up there and this holds all that, uh, holds the wires up where we need them. Because if you don't have this, they just hang down on the exhaust. You have to try to figure something else out. So let me stick this back up on those studs. I don't know if we're gonna get that piece of foil back on there. We'll try. I'll stick the little retainer ring on the end of a socket. Let's see if we can't just hold that foil over there. Line that little guy up and then just give it a push. And that'll keep that on there. Like that, and then we'll take the other one here. Just using a 12 millimeter socket. Might have to get a shorty to get to this back one. There we go. So you stick that back on. That'll keep that wire up against the oil pan and you know a little heat insulator. I don't know how well it works. You know, it's soaked with oil, but as long as it keeps them from burning up on the uh, cats, there. That's that's all you're looking for. Much to see. Uh, getting the air box out is not an option. Uh, the bolts just spin inside the uh, inner fender. I'm not going to tear the fender liners and stuff out. Just get the air box out. But I think I was able to reach down. I'm pretty sure I felt it crack. Cracked them for 120, as my kids would say. Cracked them. Reach down here. I can't quite give it a handy yet. Let's see if I can get just a little bit more purchase on it. Oh yeah, look at that. I think we're doing good. These are not ones you want to come out hard, especially if you can't see them. Alright, I think we're in good shape. Get my arthritic knuckles to spin the right way here. Come on. Yes, sir. Da, 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 da. That one the old. The one we took out is OEM, has or at least has OEM number on it. At five eight zero two eight nine nine or five alpha alpha it looks like but you can see you know the NTK versus the uh, OEM oftentimes yeah I mean this has the same digits stamped on the bottom on the hex as the uh, NTK so always a good choice when you're talking with Chrysler's Get her started here, hopefully. All right, let me get that little 7 8 stubby. I think I've got enough room to swing that down here. I've got it spun in most of the way. Let's see if we can't just finish it off with the wrench. Yeah, it's snug as a bug in a rug. However else that goes. We'll get the wires. Put them up in a ring. Plug it up, as they say. What's up, Miss though? There's an older gentleman here to speak to you about a vehicle that won't start sometimes. Sometimes, huh? Sometimes. Sometimes it won't start. You know that song? What song? I don't know what that song is coming. <laughs> Alright. How old is he? He's 
think we can take advantage of them like we do women. <laughs> oh my gosh. Isn't that what mechanics do? Old people and women? I think that's what people think. Imagine how much we take advantage of old women. Uh huh. Ooh, is that broke? Oh. No. Broke. You ain't necessarily no broke. Broke. Mm -hmm. Let me put the. Oh. Well, what is this, your first day? Gosh, what a Do you have a phone answer? What a rookie. All right, that's it, boys. I think we got it done. Been working on it in between other jobs, but I think we're successful. We did our 202s, we fixed the exhaust, we fixed the brake line, we came and saw. We kind of oh crap, a big chunk just fell out of the hood. Oops. We'll just pretend we didn't see that. We'll stick that back there. Fired it up. I did clear the coach before I started it. May not want to run a drive cycle today. All right, so codes are cleared. Oops. What is going vehicle status? We'll take it for a little rip. Actually, we can hit the wrong button here. We can go look at some live data, see what those O2s look like. all of our voltage levels are all down already let's go like this and then we'll get that one on the top so both our upstreams are here and we should see those switching to get my little pointing apparatus As I mentioned yesterday, depending on where the uh, data points are collected, is depends on how smooth these graphs look. Which on older vehicles, they don't transmit data very quickly. So I've been cruising for a while. It hasn't ran. The only monitor it ran was the EVAP. But on these uh, older Chryslers with the leak detection system, it runs the EVAP. When you very first started, it sits at an idle. That's what it. If I remember correctly, it'll run the O2, it either runs the O2 or the O2 heater after you shut the car off. I can't remember which. I think it's the O2 heater, but that wouldn't make sense. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, perhaps that's... We'll have to go back and shut the key off. I'm going to go up here and do one more coast down and then turn around. And we'll go back and see where we're at. Uh, as of right now, it looks like the front and rear O2s are working just lovely. Uh, everything seems to be responsive. Brakes feel good. Muffler sounds quiet. You guys should be happy. Yeah, so I didn't run the anything other than the EVAP. Get back out of here. I'll show you. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so the EVAP's the only one that it did run. We still have to run the O2 and O2 heaters if we wanted confirmation. We shouldn't have any pending codes. We'll just double checky. And we'll shut the key off. We'll come back out in a few minutes, see if it ran the uh, O2 or the O2 heater. And it may not run either one because we disrupted the process. Turning the key on, clearing the codes, and then you know shutting the key off and starting it, regardless that the engine was cold, um, it disrupts the process. And oftentimes they won't run the drive cycle right away. It's been a little bit. 212, I didn't have to get the mileage. Let's just see if it ran anything. It sat for a while. Oh, it did. It ran a whole bunch of monitors with the key off. <laughs> Isn't that funny how that works? So right now, let's go back see. How could it? It must have ran everything but the catalyst. I told you these things ran a lot of monitors. Key off. Catalyst, it did not run. Evap's happy. O2's happy. O2 heater's happy. Everybody's happy. Happy, happy. Let's make sure it didn't set any pending codes while it ran those monitors. No fault codes detected. So we're good. Everybody's good except for uh, the converters, which that test will run next time he runs it. All right. All right. That's it, folks. Show's over. So let that be a lesson to you that, uh, like I say, these older Chryslers, I was pretty sure when you shut that key off, that's when it ran 
I thought just the O2 or the O2 here, but evidently both. It satisfied both of them. Uh, key off. We had four not set. Evap. No, Evap was set, so we had Catalyst not set. O2, O2 heater. I don't know what the other one was. I don't know. Don't know, don't care, because we don't have any codes, and this guy should be happy. And what would make me happy would be if you would go in that comment section, leave a question, a comment, find us on our socials, Insty, Facebook. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.